Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So let's talk about the 950 P1000 best video settings. Um, some of the things that can help you right off the bat, a sunshade gives you a little bit better color contrast, doesn't give you the sun flares, it doesn't um, allow your image to be washed out. Believe it or not, it does help. The other thing is the microphone. Anything you do while shooting video, you hit any of the buttons, it automatically records that sound in the camera it's really sensitive so if you want to be able to zoom without you hearing the zoom in the recorder this definitely helps wind picks up voices better yes definitely need that it's about 30 to 50 bucks i think this is about 20 dollars. i'll put the links down below if you guys are interested in it so let's get into the video settings um you guys have seen the rabbit videos and the prairie chicken videos those are both shot um, with these small cameras. I've done some in-camera reviews using this camera at manual settings. So there are really two settings or two ways of operating video on the Nikons. One is full automatic mode, which is a little red button back here and you click it and it chooses what ISO, um, shutter speed, all that to use to get you the best video quality it can. Now it's doing that as you know, it's, it's expecting the average person to run the camera. So it doesn't know if you're an eight year old or an 80 year old with shaky hands, something along those lines. It doesn't really know. Um, with doing that, it overcompensates for raising some of the ISO or raising the shutter speed to capture the moment a little bit better. The nice thing though, with automatic mode or in the red button mode is the fact that you can capture 4K still images while you're recording 4k video meaning you get 20 images and it's noted at the top left of the camera button there's a actual camera button with 20 up there and each time you push the shutter button it you know decrements one one still frame if you want to reset and get another 20 images you actually have to turn off the video and then reset it back to and start it again. But it's actually pretty nice if you're wanting to do a little bit of stills and a little bit of uh, video work. Ability to get eight megapixel images, it's big enough for 13 by 19s, stuff of those natures. But really the, the, the gist of it is the video and the focus and the manual exposure mode. So let's get into the manual exposure mode. So manual exposure, there's a little dot up here. You'll move to the camera with the M on it. Once you do that, you hit the menu button. Okay, now that we have the main manual recording dial set up, we need to go into the menu options. So for the menu, you'll notice there is an exposure mode. There is aperture priority and manual. Aperture priority is essentially the default of the camera. Whenever you're off the main camera recording mechanism, if you push the red button, it's using aperture priority. But we actually want to go manual, so we'll set that. The picture control is generally set to standard or neutral. If you have really cloudy conditions and you want a little more vivid pop, you can go vivid for the colors to make them make them a little bit more saturated. But for the most part, standard should set you up there. Image sharpening, I re we really don't mess with those things. And let's get back in. Custom picture control, really do not do anything with that. White balance is set to auto. ISO sensitivity, now this is the largest and the biggest thing that's gonna increase your image quality. Essentially, set the ISO quality to 100, 200, 400. If I have to go over 400, let's say 800 or 1600, I generally go to automatic exposure mode for video because it's really not going to gain much from going to manual. And what that does is if you, say, set your at 125, 100 ISO, that allows you to get a better, cleaner image and more resolution, less noise, and that equates just to an overall much better image. So going back down, let's do some of the video settings. The video settings, movie options, generally you wanna go with 2060, 4K resolution, 30 frames a second. This allows us if we want to, you know, even if we want to push 1080p video and downsample it, it allows us to get a little bit res better resolution, a little bit less noise, 
color contrast, all that kind of shows through in 4K versus 1080p at the same ISO. So I always keep it at 4K. Down sample is needed, even though it does take up more uh, storage space, it's definitely worth it. So if we go to the next item on the agenda, we can go to the frame rate. This is important. You can either go 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second. For 4K, these cameras, the max is 30 frames per second. We'll set that. And the auto mode, auto focus mode. So we'll reset that and we'll get in here. Auto focus. Now we have two main forms of focusing systems, autofocus. One is autofocus single, which is essentially if you're going to take video of a person in a chair, an interview, or a static subject, this is probably one of the best things to use because once it locks focus, it doesn't give up. It doesn't change focus. Now autofocus full-time is one of those that if your subject's moving, let's say a soccer game, a, a bird or an animal moving around, this is probably one of your better settings to have because it will automatically adjust to the subject. Now there is a third way and that is using the manual focus up here. The very top button can be switched to manual focus and that's done by using the, the various rings. On the P1000 it's at the very top, the P950 it's over on the left hand side. That allows us to rack focus very quick and in low light situations when the camera cannot focus very well, we can take over control and actually use the manual focus to get the correct um, focus on the subject. So it's a nice added thing and it actually works quite well. But for the most part, you can stick with autofocus manual, autofocus all, autofocus full time, and you'll be fine. Okay, let's go over a quick way to check our settings. It's really on the back of the camera you can see everything. Now your display, you can clear the display, but if you hit the display button, you're going to see ISO 125, which is in a low side. Your shutter, your shutter speed is 1 30th of a second. You can change that all the way up manually, but you want to keep it down to 1 30th of a second. That's really not that negotiable. It's got to be there. Now the f-stop is something that you can change here through the, through the dial. And you want to try to keep that at the lowest number possible, or the it's called the widest aperture. So if you go up to let's say f 5.6 notice how it's getting darker and that's not good so you're totally changing the exposure you want to keep the f stop at 2.8 so when you zoom in guess what the numbers go up your aperture gets smaller it gets darker and when you pull back the zoom it doesn't automatically reset to the widest aperture so much so it takes a little bit sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't and you can change that so a quick way of showing this is you're in manual mode up here. You're in 4K, 30 frames a second. You got an f-stop of 3.2, shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, ISO 125. That's how you know basically you're set up and ready to go. And obviously, if you want to go manual focus, there's a manual focus button here. You can switch back and forth. Switch it to manual focus and then do the actual focus by the focus wheel here on the P1000, it's the upper ring, and it's got a really good focus mechanism where they call it pulling focus in the industry where you can make it kind of zip. And it looks really nice. One of the things with video and these cameras is that the focus capabilities are a little bit lacking, but if you want to go with autofocus single, which means it kind of locks on, you lock onto it, and the focus stays there. If you tap the left button here, you can see that the focus will switch back and forth. That's awesome, that works. And that now if you wanna go autofocus full time, which that means is if you change subjects and change areas, the camera will automatically focus, continuously focus for you, which is awesome. I use both. I actually am starting to use more manual focus because I feel like it just seems to work faster than the slower focus systems these cameras have. And it's actually really simple. But the thing is, is once you start the video, 
if you're automatically on automatic focus, you can't really go to manual focus. You have to decide one or the other before you start the videos. Anyway, I hope this helps. There's the things that you can try to do is get a tripod, get make sure your lighting is in order, or if possible, the best possible lighting and adjust your ISO off that if you're in manual mode. If you're in automatic mode, you really don't have a lot of options besides getting better light or getting better angles. And you always wanna keep that camera as stable as possible because it really does matter as far as um, making your image or your video not so jelly. Uh, it, it just seems to firm things up a lot more when it's on a stable platform. And that's about it, guys. Um, so how do you choose? If, if the lighting conditions are changing a lot or if I'm moving the camera a lot, I just go with auto, auto video. If I know like in the studio setting or if I'm in a field and I know things won't change very dyna dynamically, I'll manually go to that video and shoot it that way. Set it, dial it in, dial the exposure in, then go that way. And you get the best of both worlds there. Anyway, hope this helps. Guys, if you guys got comments, questions, concerns, put them down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.